normal blood glucose levels. I'm going to discuss this today and you will know everything about it. Diabetes is diagnosed by measuring blood sugar, right? Well, hello. Well, normal fasting blood sugar would be 70 to 99 milligram per deciliter or 3.9 to 5.5 millimole per liter. High levels indicate diabetes or prediabetes. So this test measures your glucose levels in your blood, right? Glucose is a type of sugar, as you know, it is the only one that fuels your cells. Every cell in your body needs fuel to make energy for all the chemical reactions it needs to function. Now, to test fasting blood sugar in the morning, it requires fasting. <laughs> Duh! It's typically overnight, but uh, typically nothing but water and most medications for at least eight hours. Now, the definition is, if you're a non-diabetic, uh, your blood sugar level will be less than 100 mg per deciliter or less than 5.5 millimole. For pre-diabetes, it's 100 to 105 or 5.5 to 6.9 millimole per liter. And fasting blood sugar levels above the 125 mg per deciliter or 6.9 millimole per liter indicate diabetes. Diabetics, blood glucose levels should be 80 to 120 mg per deciliter or between 4.4 to 7.2 millimole per liter and that is the goal, right? So what is normal post-eating, like after eating? Well, as you know, eating raises blood sugar, and two hours after eating is typically a good time to check it. Non-diabetics should have blood sugar below 140 mg per deciliter, but if you have diabetes, you should keep post-meal blood sugar less than 180 mg per deciliter. Now, how about A1C? A1C shows your three-month blood glucose levels. This test can be done anytime without fasting and it will tell you how high your average blood sugar was over the past three months. Now, red blood cells live in your body for 120 days. That's why we test it every three months. Glucose sticks to red blood cells for life. You will be a pre-diabetic if you are between 5.7 to 6.4 and you will we'll call you diabetic if you are more than 6.5% A1C. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that less than, you know, let's say over 5.7 is okay or pre-diabetes is okay. It's not okay. These are just some arbitrary definitions that just we just made up. Can you get harm from diabetes if your A1C is over 5.7? Yes, but it takes a long time, right? So the higher the A1C, the faster the complication rate. So if you are an 80-year-old individual and just got diagnosed with diabetes and your A1C is 6, 6.5, don't worry about it too much. Do your, whatever you can, but unless you are planning to make it to 110, you know, more than likely you don't need to worry that much if your overall health is not that great. But if you are like my age, like in your 40s, 50s, you know, then you should really be more aggressive with your diabetes management and keep your A1C as low as possible. Now, why is A1C test is so common and why everybody likes it so much? First of all, you don't need to fast to do it. So it also ignores the highs and lows, which is a good and a bad thing at the same time, but it gives you your average. So that's a good part of it. It can show if your diabetes treatment is working as well. So non-diabetics can repeat this test every three months or six months or can be even done sometimes, you know, earlier if you know what you're doing with the test because most people don't realize that actually A1C uh, will change 50% within the first month. So if you knew that fact, and if you check your A1C and your A1C dropped 1% within a month, you know that it's going to drop another 1% for another month or two. So these are the things that we doctors know and kind of understand, and, but now you do as well. So why not, right? Just say thank you in the comment section and I'll be happy about that. Now. What about the glucose tolerance testing? We have something called glucose tolerance testing and you basically go for an overnight fast, come in, we give you a 75 gram disgusting glucose syrup and two hours later, we check your blood sugar levels if you are still with us. I'm just kidding. Uh, you typically are, but some people have nausea problems or some people crash their blood sugars after two hours. We call this reactive hypoglycemia. But typically, the normal at two hours, if you are very normal, will be less than 140 milligram per deciliter or less than 7.7 .7 millimole per liter. Now, we will call you pre-diabetic if you are between 140 and 199 milligram per deciliter or 7.7 .7 to 11 millimole per liter, okay? Now, we'll call you diabetic, unfortunately, if you're over 200 milligram per deciliter or more than 11 millimole per liter. 
So, but if you're over 200 or 11 millimole at any time during the test, you know, it could be one hour, two hours, three hours, we'll still call you diabetic. So once we see the 200 number, that's it, you're done. And if you're, let's say, doing a finger stick and then you're over 250 and you have symptoms, more than likely you have diabetes as well. Now, can you do a finger stick to diagnose yourself? Well, diabetes testing is A1C, two-hour glucose tolerance test, and a fasting blood glucose test. See, those finger sticks are not very reliable. I mean, you, can, you will have an idea. If your blood sugar is 300 when you check with someone else's blood sugar or meter test, you will know that you're probably in trouble, but you still have to get tested with A1C and fasting blood sugars at least to confirm the diagnosis. So yes, if you suspect it, you know, check with someone else's meter or buy yourself a meter or whatever, but finger stick at a home testing is not necessarily enough to have a self-diagnosis of diabetes in many cases. That's why we use lab testing, which is much more reliable. Now, it is not a bad idea to see an endocrinologist early on. They will advise you on how often to test and then your A1C levels and fasting blood sugars and understanding this. And this watching this channel may actually help you more than seeing an endocrinologist in some cases, but it's not going to hurt to see someone, right? So consider your findings and your A1C and your blood sugar goals. Discuss with your doctor. Make a personal goal that will give you the best results. You may be insulin resistant. You may not even have prediabetes, for example, and your endocrinologist will nail it and will tell you the truth straight. Now, some of my patients don't like when I talk straight and they give me negative reviews. That's okay, but as long as I know I'm telling the truth, that's what I care about, okay? So when it comes to diabetic diets, to weight loss, exercise, I know people don't want to do those things, but those are the initial treatments, right? Now, if lifestyle changes fail, you may need sometimes diabetic drugs, sometimes even insulin. But if you want to avoid medications, I would suggest using sugar MD advanced glucose support. If your blood sugars are too high and you don't want to take any medications, I would say that is going to work like a miracle, like most people say. And you can just watch some YouTube reviews or go on Facebook. Just ask around. You will see our supplements work like a charm. And if you think so as well, please write in the comment section below. Say amen to that because we need more social proof because people are skeptical. You know, they don't want to believe it. They think that we are just trying to push things, sell things. But no, we are selling supplements that truly work for you. It may not necessarily be for your blood sugar. It may be for preventing complications or giving you longevity, etc. But every supplement has a purpose that we sell and it does what it says it does. Okay. Now, if you have diabetes, you really need to also learn about how to use a meter uh, or a continuous glucose monitoring system as well. So Dexcom and Freestyle Libre are very popular to be able to monitor your blood sugars on a day-to-day -day basis without finger sticks, which I highly support. Now, if your blood sugar is not coming down, what do you do? Well, make sure you stay hydrated, right? And, you know, your kidneys are helping to remove the glucose from your body. So if you're dehydrated, that's going to be really hard. Now, you have to exercise more. That way, your muscles will really help to absorb all that blood sugar. And in some cases, if you exercise intensely, for example, your blood sugar may go up, especially if you're insulin deficient. Don't worry about that. Initial spike will go away and will replace itself with a much better, nicer blood sugar rest of the day. But you have to discuss your exercise options with your doctor as well. Now, high blood sugar with type 1 diabetics should also check their urine ketones. And if you have ketones, you should not be exercising, right? You should first hydrate yourself and get better and then go exercise. And if you have type 2 diabetes and high blood sugar, you know, you should stay hydrated as well. And if your sugars are really over 400, for example, then you should also check your ketones in the urine as well. Make sure you eat differently, like we talk in this channel all the time. If you want to personalize advice, make sure you go to SugarMD Dietitians. We have it at SugarMDS.com. You can check with them. They are very inexpensive and easy to get hold of. And make sure you use our SugarMD app as well, which is totally free. And we actually offer a free chatting with the dietitian as well. So take advantage of that. So if you have a question about anything, just ask the dietitian directly from your app and you will get an answer. So sometimes you will have to switch medications or add on supplements like we discussed the sugar MD advanced glucose support or sugar MD super berberine to your routine. But once you start using our supplements, your doctor may change your diabetes medication dosage in a good way because you will probably need much less medications. 
Uh, but if your blood sugars are coming down too much, you should be aware of that and then start making some adjustments in your blood sugars with consultation with your doctor. Now, before meals, try to keep your blood sugar between 70 to 130 milligram per deciliter and less than 180 two hours after eating. If you have diabetes, these are the minimum guidelines, uh, the minimum goals for you. If you are pregnant, you should keep your blood sugar less than 140 at all times uh, to avoid complications in your baby. Now, remember, we also have some a video that talks about the habits to lower your blood sugar, five pillars of diabetes video. You can go ahead and search that right now and you will find and enjoy it. But here are some quick sugar control tips. I would say check your blood sugar regularly, okay, and act on it if it raises or falls very early on. Eat small portions, eat fruits and vegetables in small portions, and I would say fast 16 hours a day, three times a week at least. Now, regular exercise is a must because it improves your insulin sensitivity. Now, stress raises your blood sugar, so find relaxation techniques to avoid. And you know what? Life is short. Don't stress. It's not worth it. Seriously, just relax and enjoy the life and stay happy, stay healthy, guys, okay? So I tried to make it really as precise as possible for you today. I hope you liked this video, and if you do, please share, give a like, and subscribe, and leave a comment below. And I'll see you later. Thank you for watching. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying this channel so far, and I hope you subscribed already. If you didn't, do it. And if you did, watch this video right there. I think that will help you too.